10 seconds. Five seconds. Just who will die first? What's the really plan anyway? Ten seconds. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Dyer's turn to peck. Ah, you hold the horn of Magnus. It's Radiant's turn to peck. Dyer should pick Bell. Venomancer. Ten seconds. Five seconds. It's Dyer's turn. <laughs> See, they came back. Ten seconds, five seconds. Ten seconds. Five seconds. What 
Ten seconds. Five seconds. That's Dyer's first attack. Ten seconds. Five seconds. Faceless void. Estaba fríamente calculado, papi. Ten segundos. Five seconds. Muy bien, los chicos. Yo estaba fríamente calculado, papi. Yo estaba fríamente calculado, papi. ¡Ataque aquí! ¡Ataque aquí! Dude, I love this game so much, man. Building up that tempo from an early point with their laning stage. How are you feeling for game three here? You know, I'm just gonna wait until the runes spawn and people pick up the runes <laughs> and the dust settles before I say anything. Because I feel I felt kind of burned last game, talking too soon. 
Yeah. Four runes and two kills like... wins games. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be many kills happening here, though. Looking at the positioning of the map. So I'll go ahead and say that I do think No Ping, they have a pretty legit draft this game, Gary. I think this face is void. I'm not sure if they want to pick it three times in a row for K1 here. This Winter Wyvern, like one curse on this void, it's just going to nullify all the damage up of Beast Coast. So they're going to need Whisper to carry hard from the offlane so they have that secondary carry available. Yeah, and that, that is, like Bowie pointed out, that is a real strong lane for them. As it looks like No Ping going to try and come in and grab some bounty runes. They get themselves three to start off their laning stage. But yeah, that, that Venno Rubik lane, Whisper and Schofield against the TA and the Wyvern. Also, Nyx lurking around mm -hmm. top. It looks like potentially the initial try lane from, from No Ping there, maybe just to try and get a kill early on, especially towards that Venno to stop his advance. <laughs> Definitely not the best try lane to try and get a kill with, but you know, two rage <laughs> squishy heroes. Only 660 HP here. They do got uh, fairy fires on there. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, Timber's all yeah. by himself. They know that there's a try lane top. Beast Coast is like, okay, let's just play along the tree. Whisper. Got too close though. Still walks in. He's planting bananas around the tree yeah, line there. First fairy fire comes out. The melt strike level. On the minus armor and the stun, catching out the Venomancer, and once more No Ping stamping their mark on this early laning stage with one kill. Not going to get the second though. Schofield TP's out, knowing there are no oh. more stuns. Yeah, that also means Whisper's TP is going to be a little bit longer. And Panda Boot, he stole the first blood from HFN. Going to be a little upset about that. Lane is pushing out too. How's Timber looking? I, I guess with the Magnus 5, the Timber's not worried. Like, he might miss out on a few creeps early on with K1 denying them with two heroes being down there. But once Oscar is level 3, there's nothing K1 can do. Yeah, and usually with this position 5 Magnus... Oh, hang on a second. Schofield up at top. He's gone for a battle with Panda Boo, trying to hide in that tree line. There's a lift. Fade Bolt. Yeah, Schofield can only choose one or the other, though, and he's just going to get stunned up and die here, potentially. Good telekinesis. It buys him a little bit of time. Mix. But you're right. Matthew there with a couple of little love taps finds the second kill in that top lane. Stinger's even Stinger. come up here as well. So yeah, Stinger moved. <laughs> he sentried the small camp mid lane. But yeah, usually with position 5 Magnus we've seen in the past. It all skewers Matthew to the high ground. He does have a TP, though. Yep, and he's going to TP bottom. So it looks like they want to go and punish K1 now, because Stinger's top. That means there's a Void all by himself down here. And yeah, there is. no K1, he likes his creeps. So if he can't touch any creeps because there's two heroes down there, he's definitely going to be calling for someone to his lane. He is a sad puppy down there. And yeah, with the POS5 Magnus, we saw this a lot, or what, maybe like a year ago, something like that, where Shockwave Skewer, you push people under tower, you look for those sneaky kills. Timbersaw is not really a hero you can do that to, so it, yeah. it makes sense that Stinger just leave the lane. There's no point just leeching experience away from K1. Waterun's going to come up. Chris Luck has his bottle, as does Dark Margo, but Stinger takes the top rune, so no refill for the Bristleback. And so far, yeah. so good for Chris Luck. 14 and 6 against Bristleback's 9 last hits. Dark Mago, he's probably not going to be skilling up uh, Goo. Maybe he goes for the Goo. I, I would think he just goes for the Bristleback because he got the uh, Spear that can just knock him away. You don't want to be wasting any mana on Goo here. So that's what he does. Just going to play for farm. Do they have any ancient stacks? There is none so far. Oh, what? He's dead? He just gets the kill. He, he was looking at him. Okay, Chris Luck, two volleys of his spells, and uh, the Bristleback is dead. This is not something that you normally expect. Like, game two, game three, Bristleback dying alone. Yeah, just a straight-up solo kill. I mean, you can you know, factor in that water rune being stolen out by Stinger, helping out tremendously Definitely. for Chris Luck. And we need we need that Mars for, for Beast Coast to be able to come out laning stage, get that level six going, find some arena K1, kills. Though. As he's the tempo setter, as K1 time walks away from Oscar. Salved up by Stinger. And Timber Chain away. Level 2 reactive they, armor again. He's just so tanky. K1 needed Stinger to be there right then and there to salve him up because he was out of region. He doesn't have any other region coming on the courier to just boots now. And they're just going to look to punish K1. The Timber's only going to get more obnoxious in this lane. It feels like Chris Luck's the only one really farming in this. Everyone else is under so much pressure. TA struggling a little bit with CS. Venomancer has a lot of denies, in fact, even though the actual 
last hits aren't that amazing for Whisper. Oh yeah, Being spammed I mean, out a little bit by Pandaboo. Wyvern TA is a, a good lane against melee position threes, but Venomancer is just really annoying for the Templar Assassin. The refraction isn't going to do too much because they get burned out right away. And having three heroes top old Schofield though. He's got a <laughs> yeah, he's ready. Oh, he's dying to the Arctic burn. And Whisper yeah, might be dying here as well. There's a refraction up. They've got the minus armor from the meld. They do kill off that win to Wyvern, but TA very gladly picks up a couple of kills. Well, we also saw that picture in picture down bottom. That was the Magnus skewering two heroes away from the camp, which was being contested. and gives K1 a little bit more free farm time. They, they really need to get those kills on HFN though, because his experience was starting to lack since they started with the trial lane top. It was just a little bit of a mixed play from Schofield. He had a fairy fire. He was not able to pop it in time. And oh, the arena mid. Pandabu commit to two more kill, two more hits. There it is. The arena mid. And Bristle back. He doesn't have his back turned, but the lift and spear, he's been pushed over the side of the arena. And it looks like Dark Mago is going to turn. Helped out by the Arctic Burn. Back towards Chris Luck. He's got fairy fire bottle charges. The Mars surviving, but the quill sprays. They build <laughs> oh, up Schofield. quickly. And they're onto Schofield now. Dark Mago, he's hit one of his first timings. He's level six. Big punch with that 100 base damage. Oh, come on. Finish him off with the quill sprays. Pandabu tanks up the tower a little bit there just to secure it. And there's no one who can actually TP in there to help them too. You know, it's Stinger. He's only got Empower and Screw. It's not going to be enough. And that uh, backs off on Dark Mago. You know, Dota 2 Physics. At it again, Gary. In the arena, yeah. get lifted. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the God's Rebuke kicks you out of the arena. It's pushing you over the top. It's been rough for us. You know, this position 5 Magnus... The whole time through that draft, I was thinking, you know, they've not really played Spur. They've played it on Chris Luck once, the Magnus in the mid lane. It's not a hero that we've seen much from East Coast, you know, looking at their, their Dota buff profile. And bringing out this old school strat, it feels very slow. Uh, compared, oh, K1. Oh, K1 dead. Top lane two, Whisper, getting a little bit low. Level three, Splinter Blast. Can he get this off on the range creep? He doesn't land it on Whisper. Guild up. HFN, yeah, he's got three refraction charges. Side, blade. side blades off. Whisper one hit away from death, but HFN, can he catch with a gale on him? Doesn't look like it. Pandaboo dead, the uncharge on the Whisper. HFN has to TP back to his tier one. A plague ward starting to become obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, and the gale just make makes it so HFN can't really chase these heroes down. It's gone to the small camp now. But yeah, big kill there onto K1. K1's back to bottom, but Oscar, you know, he's able to solo. It's got Soul Ring, Arcane Boots, three levels into reactive armor. They don't really got a lot of damage in the Chrono either, so they can't really bring anybody down here. He's just, he's just solo killing Stinger at this point, and they've got a bit of magic damage and maybe a Chrono. K1 is not even going to bother chucking it in there. Just lets Oscar kill his support while the arena up top. HFN stuck inside, battling with Chris Luck. And that's your overfarmed Chris Luck Mars coming yeah, in, fun. but he's going to get stunned and the TP's cancelled. Pandaboo doesn't have a target really for the Splinter Blast, so it is just a TP cancel. Not a like kill. He's gonna be uh, looking for that top rune. If he doesn't get it, he's out of mana, out of resources. Gonna have to walk back to base and won't have a they're close. Yeah, they're closing oh, on yeah. a whisper. The two supports are right on his tail. Should One charges, raindrops. No stun or anything from Matthew. He's got a he's got a wand. Another another Arctic burn. Matthew actually, they're trying to keep the vision Can on him. Matthew it? with a stun. He's lining it up, but he won't be able to dive. He's blocked in actually because of the plague ward. Taking a decent chunk oh. of damage from the tower. Scorpio's on the way. They might oh, be juking. able to get a kill. Whisper. Oh, yeah. Matthew with that Baiting. vision. He was trying. He's trying. Scofield should be able to, yeah, get that lift into Gale. And Matthew zapped <laughs> by the Fade Bolt with an immediate D ward. Ah, uh, these toxic offlaners, Gary. Timbersaw, Battlemancer. Just so annoying to play against. Like the true carries of the game right now. Yeah. Every time I look bottom, K1's time walking away from Oscar. Oh, Shakram, awful. time walk back up. Yeah, it's a half HP, he will return. And Oscar, pretty limited on this mana pool now. K1, I'm going to feel a little more comfortable with that and power and a chrono and time walk to be able to disengage from the timber. Gary, how many times have you seen a faces void who doesn't really have a partner that can do damage in chrono win mm, a game? I died. I, 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 yeah, I, I would any, say zero. Any, like, I, I can't think of any. 
Exactly. It just doesn't happen. And you can see right here, K1, he's had this chrono for about three minutes now. And there's no one who can TP down there, be the plus one and kill this timber or go somewhere else and get a kill with it. He's very limited to the place that he can do on this map. Pretty much can only farm with the uh, Stinger empowering him. And I do catch a glimpse of Matthew walking through. K1 just going to go with a solo chrono once. If you look at that map. Matthew tips him. They, they know, they, they know just what you said, right? You have to chrono these supports to try and kill them. And even then, it's a, it's a long drawn out process bringing four heroes down there for a Nyx assassin. Exactly. And they have all the information where Beast Coast is, what the next move could be in the next 20 to 30 seconds now, because they show four heroes down there. Oscar, you know, he's taking this bottom tower. He's going to constantly shove this lane out. He has a TP ready to cover the other lanes if needed. Top, we say Matthew, he's going to Vendetta up. Setting up for Whisper here. HFN. Yeah, trying to play around any sentries that could be there. He's dancing around the Venno. There's the Vendetta stun. TP and HFN though, with a melt strike. Uh, still not a kill, though, because Chris Luck is to return fire. Cut the chase Arena down. Spear clears through the Nyx. The Venomancer, he's still being chased. Oscar wants to gap close onto him, but he misses the Chakram. Timber chains forward. Can't quite catch him. The Arctic Burn will slow Whisper a touch, but Oscar, there's the dive. Oh, Whisper's still, still alive it. with a one charge and the Spirit nice Vessel up. He's fine. He's actually still up and running. The Chakram, oh, it know. touches him. The killing spree nice taken. Thing. Oscar finally hits the nail on the head. Position 3, killing the enemy position 3, and that means they will be able to defend the top tier 1 tower. And Beast Coast, their map is shrinking. Mid tower was taken as well, while all that was going on. It feels bad, you know, just to drop your arena, get a kill onto the Knicks, but that's it. You just got one support kill, and now you're being pressured all over the map in terms of creeps pushing in. It's just like you said, right? They moved full bomb, they used Chrono there, everything is very telegraphed and obvious exactly. what Beast Coast are going to be doing. And Nyx Assassin, we've seen this hero, even when he's, you know, we've seen this hero go like 0 10, 0 11, but he's still doing that job. Getting in behind enemy lines, warding, breaking vision, spotting people out, giving you that intel, that information on where the plays are happening. Like right now, Matthew, he spent carapace, he'll turn with a two-man stun. He's baited in Beast Coast for a turnaround for Oscar to potentially just get a solo kill on Stinger. Vendetta Strike is going to be oh, there God. just in time. Beautiful. And they got to catch up. I got mid lane. Too. Yeah, the curse. A splinter Blast and Arctic, everything from Panda Boo straight onto Chris Luck. Lacking stuns now, though, so a very wise TP from the Mars. But they're all running backwards. K1 is running towards Fountain. Chris Luck TPs back to Fountain. And no ping of the ones advancing on the map. It's the problem for Beast Coast. They don't got that burst damage available. In any lineup, Gary, to be able to play the early game, the mid game, you need some kind of burst damage in your team. Right now, that's just Chris Luck. And every time his arena's on cooldown, they are not a threat to no ping. And no ping are taking full adva advantage of that. Look at Dark Mago with this hood. He's impossible to kill right now. Yeah, you can't they gotta contend try. with him, really. I mean, Spirit Vessel, Gale, the uh, Arena Chrono. Everything. So many circles, but there's a cold Still embrace alive. from Panda Boo. They don't have a curse. They spear back onto Matthew. He's got Carapace and a stun, but Chris Luck blasts him with that God's Rebuke. HFN wanting to get a little bit involved here. He's bored hitting creeps and farming. So he'll chase Chris Luck while the Timber Soul zones out the rest of them. Whisper does TP to safety. HFN speared away, but that means Chris Luck is now stranded under the grasps of Oscar's Timber Saw, chaining back through the Mars and finding yet another kill. Well, you said it, defending objectives, their tier one mid is untouched. You know, they used every single spell they had apart from RP because he's not yet level six on the Magnus, and that Bristleback did not die. He was also with two vessel charges blown on the Bristleback. This is just an absolute disaster for Beast Coast. Top tower, Oscar, he's make he's working on it right now. HFN, he's got a Deso coming out. It looks like they just want to go Roshan with this. They know Chrono's on cooldown. Poison Nova's on cooldown. Arena's still on cooldown. <laughs> Why not? No green lights, basically. Yeah. Stop lights are all red for Beast Coast. And this this is the Bristleback build that we were kind of expecting in the last game. Oh, oh God. The two man curse. Very they nice walk curse. down in towards the Roche pit. It's beautiful to whisper. Ah, Stinger, fake pumping the RP. He, oh, he actually landed it. I had a bit of lag there. And they still get the two man stun, but there's no follow through. Stinger just dead. 
this game is so sad to watch right now for if you're a beast coast fan there's just absolutely no options for them they can get this void to continue farming but to what end k1 being pressured by this nix assassin he's being got a pressured. dd on k1 and matthew doesn't he's being, care he's being soloed <laughs> get out of my jungle says matthew yep that's what's online oh, yeah. for hfn now Top three net worth, all no ping heroes. But yeah, the, the Bristlebank build, this is kind of what we've come to know and love. The Hood, the Sanj, Eternal Shroud, the Anganim Scepter. Yep. Uh, not, not pressured at all to go an early BKB, is he? Not at all. It's like Beast Coast, you have to be ahead in order to make this Bristleback go for a different kind of build. And with the way he's at right now, top net worth, K1, he, oh, he has no... Time walk, he's just dead. Yeah, he's blown up. And the timber chain in. Oscar's gonna body block Chris Luck. Matthew whiffs out on the impale. That could have been a freebie, but with a chakram slowing them down, uh, good telekinesis and defensive arena. Chris Luck gonna get out of there, but Dark Margo turns onto Whisper instead. Melt Strike minus armor. Dark Margo with 330 damage per hit just slams into the Venomancer. The Aegis is claimed pretty much immediately though, and Schofield's Refraction has bought him enough time to steal the chakram and do a bit of damage back to them, but it is really just a rampant run forward from No Ping, claiming kill out to kill skewering up to the high ground they will get oscar and matthew up there near the tier threes but it doesn't seem to matter k1 has time walked in he wants matthew the mana burn the meld strike any damage coming through k1 he's got chrono he wants to play around with this he's jumping aggressively forward onto them they don't get the curse winter wyvern has walked into the blue bubble the they don't have the damage though just a cold embrace and the swing back in dark margo hunting but a good yule's out from chris luck buys the space for k1 to time walk back up to the tier three and high ground and Schofield with a couple of traps, looking to slow them down, but it is frantic, scrambling to fight here from Beast Coast, looking for any opening, and now the curse. Good spear back, Dark Mago caught up, Panda Boo, gonna get sliced by that Fade Ball coming in, and an RP, oh, Stinger, go on, give it to him, he's got Spirit Vessel on him, and an RP solo onto Dark Mago will probably take down the Bristle back here, they've got him. The big kill claimed, HFN and Matthew no longer want any part in this team fight. Time to run, no ping. They're being pinged. They are being pinged by Beast Coast. HFN melding and hiding, speared up against the side, and K1 comes back in hot. Claims the killing spree, and Matthew, he's been stunned and slowed. He's dead. It's a double for the Faceless Void. They can't kill Oscar, though. Surely not. <laughs> well, the long, drawn-out fights, you know, that's how Beast Coast are able to come back into this game the time dilation the venomancer the plague words the poisons things you know taking away no ping they need to look for those burst picks and just kind of reset from it but they entertained beast coast they went down the hill they were diving so deep where were they between the two <laughs> tier two towers down the hill of the triangle ah uh, they, they, oh, they were really skewed. feeling themselves on no ping they yeah. got skewed and into tier gonna, threes yeah and now they're gonna have to um change the game plan a little bit reset you know have a mental reset Dark Mago, full mana, full HP, back down mid lane, and Beast Coast are like, oh man, again? Gotta deal with this guy once again with four resources? Feels bad. Man, I gotta deal with all of them. Bristle, Timbersaw. I mean, TA, gonna finish off that Dragon Lance. HFN, a little bit behind what we've seen previously from his POS1 TA. I think Trent was saying 20 minutes in or so, he had that, that Dragon Lance Desso and a BKB. So he's lagging a little bit behind, but look at this. K1 farming aggressively into the dodge. Matthew, he was lurking, looking for his chance to strike onto the faceless void. Mana burning to try and stop any time walks, but he has one left. I mean, meanwhile... back mid. Yeah. Dark Margo. All right, arena and it looked like he was uh, facing Beast Coast, so the Bristleback was not able to tank up enough. Whisper also with the Vessel helping out. So all that diversion from K1... Got them another kill on the Bristol. You know, K1, Stone I like his spray. brand right now. Sanja and Yasha into uh, Diffusal Blade. There's so many tanky heroes on no ping. You're just looking to drag the fight out with your time dilation. Just burn mana with your Diffusal Blade. And eventually you will get that damage that you need. Beast Coast, they're just trying to drag this game out. Get to the late game where the heroes are going to have far more impact. We're going to have some really long fights, aren't we? With with Venom yeah, Void are. up against Bristle Timbersaw. Maybe a couple of little jump in, you know, from the TA to find that initial kill. But well, these fights are going to be super, super extended.
Dark Mago is going for a uh, Lotus now because he wants to be able to remove the time dilation and the vessel of the Venomancer. I I'm kind of sad, you know, not going for that Agonims. Yeah. Well, yeah, they've, they've got team fighting. Yeah. They've got a Lotus on a Timber, but yeah, I guess they want two of them. And so far, Schofield, he really has been stealing some exceptional spells. Getting the Chakram every yes. time, he's been getting up Quill Spray, stacking up a lot of damage on them. The Even big spell that he's going to look for in the late game is that maxed out mana burn from Matthew. If he can get Ooh. that ability, I totally see Beast Coals destroying team fights in the late game just by burning the mana of the Bristleback, making them unable to fight, or the Timbersaw, and just taking the engagements afterwards. And Panda were losing his courier there. K1 moved in, killed it off. So that's the Aether Lens pretty much gone. Russell Mack going to get speared away from that hasted Chris Luck as they yeah. jump in with a two-man RP. Stinger, he's gone straight on to Panda Boo and Dark Mago. There's double Chakrams in there. Matthew's killed off by K1 elsewhere. Stinger and Panda Boo both trading blows and lives while Chris Luck, he's grabbed an illusion room, but he's got a Yules and run now. Dark Mago's Bristleback is a real strong force running towards your squad. Whisper and Schofield trying to hold that line. I do got a Gale towards him. I've got two yeah, Vessel Charges to play here. around with. I've got a Yules in five. There's the Spear towards him. He's Lotus Orbed up, though, so Dark Margo, he's still looking reasonably tanky, but they in comes K1 him. with a time dilation. They've got a Chrono ready. You're right, Gailey. Another Spirit Vessel Charge, and Dark Margo Not stuck there. Beast wow. Coast around him. Don't even <laughs> use the Chronosphere. You know, the delay tactics from Beast Coast is working out so well. No Pain just continue to entertain. You know, he feels like he's invincible on Dark Maggle, but he just keeps getting chipped away. And that's Hold on, the Wyvern. Yeah, and TA's yeah, walked into it. Hero. The TA tries to Mel Strike into K1, but he jumps away. Doesn't get caught that's with right. any stuns. And it was a good steal on the Impale from the Rubik there as a Winter's Curse on the K1 just to try and delay the move. Panda Boo's still dead, though. The damage over time from Whisper and Stinger. No RP, just a skewer. Ready and powers K1 runs away. So no ping. This is their window right now. The Chrono was used. You got to kill onto the Mars. Let's see if they decide to smoke up. They need Matthew to get this Blink Dagger. They don't really have that initiation at the moment. I do believe Gary that no ping have missed their window. They had this timing in the mid game, like around. I want to say 12 to 17 minutes, 18 minutes, where they're just in front of Beast Coast. They just should be taking the tier two towers with that first Aegis. But, you know, that play where they got a little too aggressive has really brought Beast Coast back into the game. No Ping are feeling a bit awkward without this Aegis on the Templar Assassin right now. That's, that's the key, right? They took Aegis, they lost it within 30 seconds of having it. And now, sure, Beast Coast are delaying you, but you're kind of waiting for Roshan to come up at the same time. And it's going to culminate in that massive team fight around Roche, potentially in the next 15 to 20 seconds. Keep our eyes out on that timer for, for the respawn of it. And Beast Coast yeah, moving no out to smoke. They want to make some plays while the Chrono's on cooldown. I mean, they don't mind. K1 doesn't really need Chrono to be able to do damage oh. right now. He's got that Diffusal Blade. Matthew sees him. The double scan. And Roshan, two minutes. That's what the timer says. Everyone's going to be dancing around the pit. They've nearly got Blink on Stinger, actually. Philosopher's Stone, yeah, he's, he's 20 gold away from it. Going to clear out a couple of creeps top. Now you're dealing with Blink RP, Chrono, Arena. All of these massive circle abilities. That AoE is huge. And we, we know how fragile Templar Assassin can be if she gets caught by even one of them. It could be lights out for HFN. Needs to get to that BKB incredibly quickly. Really does. Went for the Crystalis first and a little bit of extra damage. He will have the BKB for the next uh, Roshan now. One minute left for that to respawn. Going to be fighting into a lot of teamfight abilities. I'm I'm getting worried for no ping now because, uh, yeah. like I said, they just missed their chance to be able to jam their net worth down East Coast throat. My hands are sweating, man. I'm, I'm feeling it. This, this game is going uh -huh. to get to a boiling point pretty soon. K1, yes, too. He is going to take over HFN soon. A face is Void who has more net worth than a Templar Assassin. Oh, boy. I mean, it really is. I, I often think this, this term is used too much, but the, the calm before the storm. This is that lull, that moment really of is. waiting, consideration, deliberation of what you're going to do in that next minute or two, because that's what's going to decide this game. And we're in game three. That's deciding the series. And if K1, K1 walks up, 
He spots out the HFNTA. They lift her back. She's mana. forced to BKB. K1 jumps. They're just going to kite this. Ways to BKB the TA. And they do get the jump forward. Good four staff away. Schofield trying to delay and dodge. A Yules and now the Chrono. In onto the Templar Assassin. HFN gets caught out, but it's a great Winter's Curse. Stops out that faceless Floyd, but they got the RPM. The arena in onto HFN. And this is the problem we were describing. The jump onto the TA. She's so fragile. Get caught by one. Get caught by all. Has to move in now. And no ping. They're turning back onto them. They do kill off Chris Lug, but they've got K1 to contend with. The skewer back. The stinger catches them. Matthew dragged out of the low ground, and K1 is battering into them, bashing and clearing through Darmago. The Bristleback's in trouble. Outside the Roche pit, Beast Coast win a fight and claim the second Roche. They're GG. Yep, they got the Solar Crest. Oh, what? what? They call G. They call GG. Huh? What do you mean misclick? Did he disconnect and he left the game? Oh, dude, they're so tilted, Gary. They are actually so tilted. They're done. What? Game three's over. I Panda Boo was called GG and he's disconnected. That's no I misclick. It's it. game over. That what? is not exactly. That is not a misclick. That We're going to he pushed into a road GG and left the game. Like we we're... we're going to the second best of three, right? We're going to that second best of three, noping against Beast Coast repeat. Oh my god. Yeah, I can't believe it. I mean, Tonight. The, the emotions are so high for no ping right now. You can see what just happened. Panda Boy must be extremely frustrated to write that without the consent of the rest of his team. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, that, that's, that's, that's it, right? The, the, you know, if we can get... <laughs> Confirmation yeah, from the no, admins. That's that, it. The that, game, that is game the over. The game's just over. The, the game's, game's over. just over. Yeah. Um, Beast Coast have won. So we're going to be having another series today uh, to, you know, fix the tiebreaker. And we'll see what happens. But yeah. I, I'm, I'm dumbfounded too. I mean, like, Beast Coast, they did a great job. Like, you, you have a lineup with no ping where you are not allowed to make those kind of mistakes and give away kills to Beast Coast, right? So Beast Coast, they just... Took advantage of that, got a few kills. Now the Void is ahead of the TA, becomes this unkillable beast with the Scotty, the Sanjin Yasha, the Fusal Blade, baiting out spells from Noping, and it just feels like Noping have no idea how to take team fights anymore. TA needed that second Roshan to be able to play the oh, game, yeah. and without it, it's just that's it. And the Void is about to pick up a shard and Aegis, and I just don't see how Noping can actually come back into this game. <laughs> If we could get confirmation from admins, because like yeah, GG has been called, it looks like Dark Mago there is confirming it. So we should be heading into that second series. Another best of three between Beast Coast and Noping. It's going to be coming your way right after this break. Well, I